thing we have to really focus on in the how is our blood sugar. So for all of you who don't know, blood sugar just means the amount of energy you have in your system. Okay? So when you eat food, the food's going to get broken down and you're going to have an increase in blood sugar, meaning you have an increase of energy in your system. If we want to eat right and if we want to lose fat, we have to talk about stabilizing your blood sugar, meaning that you're eating nice portioned meals frequently throughout the day. What happens most times is people don't eat enough throughout the day or they take way too long to eat and we have an instability in blood sugar. So for example, if you don't eat breakfast or let's say you take maybe six or seven hours to eat in between meals and you're really hungry and you go eat a meal that's a little too large for your body to handle, you're going to have way too much energy in your system and your blood sugar is going to spike. Let's say that we want to stay in this little tube here for safety and also for the perfect weight loss, right? So when you eat too much food and you increase your blood sugar, that means we have too much energy in our system and our body cannot physically process or handle that. You have a hormone in your body called insulin and insulin is released by the pancreas and insulin's job is to regulate the blood sugar. So insulin is going to come in anytime you breach this little area, the little safety net. It's going to come in and say, whoa, all of this energy is too much. I can't do anything with it. Get rid of it. So insulin's going to say, all right, I'll take all of this and I'm going to store it away for later use. Chances are you're storing it as fat, okay? So when insulin is present in your system, that's not a good thing. That means you're in fat storage, okay? Now, on the flip down side of that, not only are you storing fat, but then your sugar goes through a crash. And if anybody has ever eaten too much food, I'm sure you've experienced the crash where all of a sudden you get very lethargic. Or it's really funny, you can see this a lot in children. If you give them really high sugary meals, they're like spazzing out and they're going crazy and then all of a sudden, woof, it, they crash. It's almost like somebody takes their battery pack out and they're ready for sleep. That is the response of the insulin being taken out or being thrown in your system and pulling all of your energy out. So you really don't want to be here, meaning, eat, meaning eating too much at one meal because you're constantly going to be storing that food. Now, on the flip side, we also don't want to be too low in blood sugar. And how this happens is maybe you just don't eat enough food throughout the day or you take way too long to eat in between meals. Again, maybe it's like six, seven, eight hours goes by before you eat again because you're really busy, you're running around with the kids, you're working, you're stuck in a meeting, maybe you're just not hungry, so we don't eat enough. Now what happens when your blood sugar comes really low like this is that your metabolism will actually slow down a little bit. And why do you think that is? Well, it's because if you're not giving your body energy and you're not replenishing it, your body will not give you the energy back. You have to remember, as human beings, we're meant to survive for long periods of time without food. It's innate in us. And that goes back to years and years and years ago, thousands of years ago, when we were hunter-gatherers and we didn't have food readily available like we do today. So our bodies still know that. So if we don't eat enough of food, everything in our system says, all right, I'm going to kind of hoard everything. I'm going to slow down and kind of go into hibernation. So your, your metabolic rate will slow down. Now, that's, a, that's kind of like a recipe for disaster if you think about it because now your metabolism is a little bit slower. And then you get to a point where you're so hungry that what happens? We start craving foods. Maybe, you know, you crave not just a piece of grilled chicken. You know, you're going to crave like the sugars, the pastas, the candies, the breads, the carbs. Your body's going to crave things to get your energy up. And again, carbs are that energy. So instantly we know if we eat those carbs, our blood sugar will spike again. So the problem becomes, well, now that our metabolism is really, really slow, then we gorge ourselves and we binge and we eat so much food because we're starving, our blood sugar spikes too high, and if you see, we breached ourselves here, insulin's gonna come in again, store all of this, and pull your blood sugar down. So I think you can kind of get the drift that eating uh, too much at one time or just not enough throughout the day is not really creating a stable environment, and you're also storing fat on both ends of the spectrum. 
So what does this mean then? How do I stabilize my blood sugar? Well, to stabilize your blood sugar, it just means eating well portioned out meals frequently. Maybe like every three to four hours. I don't feel you have to eat every two hours. Uh, if you can't eat, you know, every, you, you might not want to eat seven meals a day because schedules really can't do that. But as long as you're eating every three to four hours and you have a nice balance of proteins, carbs, and fats, you'll have stability in your blood sugar. So I'm just gonna erase this so I can kind of draw that out for you and we can get to the process there. So I'll draw our little safety net again. And let's say that you're now really conscious and you're eating frequently, you're having nice portioned out meals, you're gonna have nice stability within your blood sugar, okay? When you have stability, this is the only time we're gonna really have fat loss. So I'm gonna break that down for you and explain it. When you eat food, food enters your stomach, you're gonna break it down just like you normally would, and your blood sugar will increase because again, you have energy present in your system. Now, you digest all that food, and when you're done digesting, in between mealtime, your body's still going to look to pull energy from somewhere because you're still moving, you're still breathing, you're still burning, and your metabolism is still working and running properly. So we have to find energy from somewhere. The first place we go to is your liver. These are not drawn to scale, <laughs> trust me. But. So in your liver, you have all this glycogen in it. Now, if you remember from before, I said we store food that we don't eat, uh, or I'm sorry, we store food that we can't burn sometimes in the form of glycogen. Well, your liver is one of those places that it gets stored. So in between mealtime, when our body's looking to pull energy from somewhere else, your liver is going to start releasing glycogen and your body's gonna suck that up and use that for energy, okay? Now, when you're eating, again, portioned out, balanced meals throughout the day, this process will probably take about mm, one and a half to two days to deplete through all the glycogen in your liver. If you want a good analogy for it, it's like cleaning out a junk drawer. You know that drawer, everybody has one in the house that's so overstuffed that every time you open it, you can't find things, things are falling out of it. Let's look at our liver exactly the same way. There's so much glycogen in it, it's not functioning at optimal speed. So the goal is to take everything out, reorganize and clean, right? So that's the same thing your liver is gonna do in between all of your meals over the course of your first day or two. Now, as this process goes, your glycogen is going to start depleting. So I'm going to draw this little scale here with numbers. We're going to say day one and day two are your liver glycogen. Okay, so we're getting down on the scale here. Now, as you go through the process, and let's say it's day three, and again, this isn't like exactly day three, but it's just easier to describe it this way. So let's say you eat again, you have an increase in your blood sugar, and in between meals, your body has to, again, find somewhere to get this energy. Your liver says, well, I'm cleaned out. I don't have any more glycogen to give you. Go find it somewhere else. So the next place we turn are our muscles. Every muscle in our body holds glycogen, all right? So your muscles are gonna say, here, take this glycogen and use that for energy. Now, this doesn't mean it's like muscle fibers. It's not your strength in your muscles. This is food and glycogen that's just been sitting there that you've never used up before. So the glycogen is gonna, again, be released out of your muscles. You're gonna take that and use that for your energy to carry you from meal to meal. This process, again, takes about two days. So we're gonna come back to the chart here and we're gonna knock off another two days. Now we're on day five. Again, you eat. You bring your blood sugar up when you eat. In between mealtime, after you're done digest with your digestion, your body's gonna again say, okay, well I still need energy to keep me going. So where do I get it from? Because my liver's cleaned out and running great, my muscles no longer have glycogen. Where can I go and get the energy from? Ah, well finally, every cell, every fat cell in your body <laughs> has fat in it, right? So your body says, whoa, this fat's no good for me. It's holding me up. It's not allowing me to function properly. Why don't you use this and convert it to something that you can use to give for energy? So your cells will start releasing these lipids. And they'll say, okay, well, take this fat and use it. 
but we can't use fat in its natural state. It has to be converted. So the process, and this is probably the only scientific word I'm really going to use, it's called glucogonogenesis, and that just means the fat is being converted into a sugar, and now we're using that for energy. Here's where it gets interesting. Once we tap into the body fat here, that is when we become more ketogenic. Again, more fat burning. We're actually pulling fat out of our body and using that to carry us through the day, using it for brain functioning, for movement, for the heart circulation, everything energy that you need. You're pulling it from your fat. Okay, so that's about, I don't know, day five and on. But you can't get to this point of the fat until you go through all of these other steps, right? So here's where let's say, here's where the most important thing is in any nutritional program is consistency. Once we have consistent behavior and consistent patterns, then we can stabilize our blood sugar, then we will pull fat out. I kind of want to touch upon the fact of uh, that weekend warrior mentality or a lot of reasons why people don't become successful in weight loss or you're always cycling the same like three to five pounds constantly day in and day out week after week it's because you never really capture this here so what happens is we'll use the weekend warrior the monday through friday what happens is you get really excited on a monday and you're going to start your diet and you're going crazy right like you're cutting out all sugar you're not having any fun in your diet it's grilled chicken vegetables and oatmeal and that's it right so you get really gung-ho about it. So Monday, you start your diet. On Tuesday, you're still doing good. Thursday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And by Friday, you might get on the scale and say, wow, I lost two pounds. I'm awesome. I'm going to go treat myself to something to eat, right? Because don't we all reward ourselves with food? <laughs> so what happens is on Friday, you're really proud of yourself. And you're like, ah, it's the weekend. I'm going to go have some drinks. I'm going to go eat some meals. I'm going out to the restaurant. Saturday pulls around and maybe you're not working and you're off schedule and you're just kind of maybe grazing throughout the day, having little snacks here, maybe not really eating enough throughout the day because you know at night you're going out with your friends or your family or you're just going to kind of relax because it is the weekend and you're not working and who knows, right? So then Sunday rolls around too. And you're like, oh my God, I'm starting my diet again on Monday. So I have to eat everything I can today because tomorrow it's on. I'm not doing it, right? How many of you have experienced that, have said it, or are currently doing that? Right? So what happens is when you have that mentality and you're not consistent even through the weekend, every time you eat above what your body can handle, you are increasing that blood sugar and you're taking all of that energy and you're storing it. Once we start tapping into fat, what happens is you're just going to replenish all of that glycogen. So it's like you're taking five steps forward only to take five steps back. Now on Monday when you get on that scale and you're like, oh my God, how did I gain four pounds? So I gained the three that I lost last week plus an additional pound. This is crazy. I got to go crazy. I got to work out every day. I'm going to diet hard to get this weight off. Well, every time this happens, again, all you're doing is replenishing your glycogen. And that's where that cycle happens, where you lose the three, four, five, gain it back. Diet hard, lose the three, four, five, don't keep it going, gain it back. If you constantly do this, first off, you're going to get stressed out. You're going to get discouraged. You're not going to keep going on your program because what's the point of dieting all week long when you're only putting it back on, all right? So the number one rule in eating healthy and losing weight is to be consistent. And again, that means eating frequently throughout the day, every three to four hours, also watching your portions and making sure you have a healthy balance of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats coming in, all right? Because once you get past those first five days and you start tapping into the fat, you can lose body fat by keeping that pattern going. Super, super important.